The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. This is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. I'm usually the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, and my service here at TFNN is to have the opening call, very comprehensive daily newsletter. And uh, so it's my pleasure to sit in for Larry. He's having some uh, internet problems, as you might have heard yesterday. He was producing a fabulous show, but it just suddenly got messed up by the uh, internet uh, access that he has. I think he's in Hong Kong right now, and for some reason, normally it's good. This particular time, internet problems. So let's go through a couple of things. The Dow futures, uh, now this is the E-mini futures, up 12.75. You can see in the charts that I'm showing here, I have a Chapman Wave automated um, resistance and support levels. In the two-minute chart, 28.17 is good support, 28.22, uh, is the resistance in the five-minute chart right here? You've got a lot of 28.1875. These are not incremental to the uh, to the futures contract of being 25 cents in terms of the support and the resistance levels. So uh, it just gives you the number at 28.17.30, 28.17.08, and 28.16.50. That's all support. The, the Dow futures at this particular stage are up 131. So this, this should be a bounce day. How big the bounce is going to be very important. It was up a little bit more at the, it, let's say the E-mini was up at 28.23.75. So about four points higher earlier on than the 8.30 news report. The uh, economic report was uh, U.S. January case Schiller 20 city. Uh, house price index 3.58% versus the anticipated 3.8% year to year. I don't think that that's bad. It's just, uh, what, 22 cents lower, 0.22% uh, lower. Uh, we'll see how the market takes it. So a couple of things I wanted to do today. You know, Larry's all about the futures and the different uh, aspects of the commodity sectors. Let's just do this for the moment. The, in the commodity area, let's just do it in terms of the not the stocks and the indices. The, the bonds are down 9.30 seconds at 148 and 23.30 seconds. Hmm, I wonder if I can find this. Let me just see if I haven't uh, got knocked it off here for my own work. Oh, man, I think I did. Uh, no, there it is. Good. So in the Chapman Wave, just a real simple explanation of the Chapman Wave methodology. Try to identify the lowest, most obvious low bar and merely count each successively higher peak. Each peak gets labeled alphabetically all the way from a peak A up to a peak G. It's that that fourth highest peak, peak D, that other things can happen. That's just the simplest way of doing it. All right. So with, oh, and let me just show you, sorry, one thing, you don't make this too confusing. Within this context, if you look at, I have to find it in a different place, but I'll find it. If you look at the patterns, I consider there are only three patterns in the market. It's either straight up and straight down, or there's a cup or a U-shaped pattern, or an arch pattern. And this arch pattern very often takes the form of a lowercase h. The principle is simple, straight up, straight down, or you go from one left side point down and you come back to it, or you go from one left side point up and then you come back to it. So it's cups, arches, straight lines. I like to make it as simple as possible. Hey, look at this. Straight line right there. You had your V-shape or your cup formation. It was actually a cup and handle. And then it broke out. So leg C, I'm waiting for the D to be um, in place above 149. Uh, 149.23.30 seconds. That will start leg D. And then we go to see what happens. Leg C in the weekly chart is still very positive, meaning that the bonds are very positive, yields are very negative. Let's go on. 
Let's look at uh, gold. At this particular point, gold is down five. It was down a lot more earlier. It's at 13.17. Had a fabulous day yesterday. There's that leg D. Now D's can go to E, and there's that E in the weekly chart right there in the daily chart on the 20th of February at 13.49.8. It drops right down to the 200 period exponential moving average exactly twice it hits it and then rebounds strongly. This, for those of you who are not used to it, this is the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. This is the slow stochastic. The blue line is on balance volume. This is the weekly daily on the left, weekly on the right, uh, sorry, weekly in the middle. On the right is the monthly. Look at the gold chart. When you look at it in the monthly chart, it's making a huge bowl formation. Bowl is not a cup formation. It had the lowercase h. There's that first arch that goes to a second arch to make an h going to an M pattern. If that holds well, which it did, you can start to see a very slow move to the right side. And that's saying looking out, I really mean looking out longer term, gold should do very, very well. In the shorter term, meaning intermediate term, it's kind of stuck between the 1400 and the uh, 1150 area. I'm talking monthly now. These are big, big moves, but it's kind of stuck. And the weekly chart says, hey, wait a minute. This is Pretty darn good action. The stochastic has pulled back sharply. It's down at 59%. That's not a good sign. The MACD is acting well, but it's making this little, I call it an M-shaped formation. There should be a little bit of a move to the right here, and then it should cross negative. So I'm anticipating that gold is still in a consolidation phase in the weekly chart from the high that was made the week of the 22nd of February at 13.49. Uh, point 0.8, let's call it 1350, to the low that was made the week of the 8th of March at 1280. So it's kind of in the middle of the range, and now it's getting to a little, a, a bit of a point here where it says upside might be a little bit um, hesitant. Let's see what happens. Certainly a break into the 1330s would be excellent action. If you look at the silver contract, this is the continuous contract for the silver, down 0.06 at 15.50. It's gone to see. I think it should try to make a leg D above the 21st of March high, 15.65. I think 15. Point, uh, just above 0.65 would start your leg D. 200 period moving average at 15.60. That's look at the look how it's been resistance. It was support. Then it became resistance, and it's still resistance. I think it's going to be resistance a little longer. Stochastic's good, but only at 69%. On-balance volume says there's no real forceful buying in the volume part of it. And one of the reasons is you see how choppy it's been on the way up, and that's reflected both in the relative strength index and the on-balance volume, the blue line. Same thing in the weekly chart. I think it's just stuck. What's really important to me is that the dollar has, under all the pressure, has held well. It's now up 11 cents. Uh, we've been long for about a year. April the 4th, we went long for my subscribers to my opening call at, uh, at 90, and it went to 97.71, dropped to 95.74, taking just a little bit off because I really do like the weekly chart. My belief is that the American economy is still the best economy, and my impression has always been that currencies of the country that's doing very well tend to have good currencies. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is just the kind of a belief that I've had. And I think that that favors the dollar. Countries are buying the dollar because they think it's the best currency. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Oops. Larry Preservento, sitting for Larry Preservento. Trade what you see. I'll be right back after these messages. Futures are up. Now up 100. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, Mozart overture there, great. So we're looking at uh, the QQQ is up a dollar twenty-seven at one seventy-nine forty-nine. Hit the fourteen-period moving average, it should bounce. It's got one seventy-eight twenty-two, no, just above it, one seventy-eight thirty thirty-two resistance. Nine-period moving average, little green line. I think it can move all the way to this trend line resistance of one uh, seventy-nine ninety. And then once 180.30, I think, will be the strong resistance. That's just my impression as, as I see everything right now. I just wanted to go through these things. Oh, I wanted to show you this. Look, wheat came off the bottom very nicely. It's in that leg D, a pretty quick peak A, peak B, peak C, leg D right now. The MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, the histogram, everything's looking good. Stochastic stuck at 91% for a couple of days. I like it. It's why I have my subscribers in a particular um, uh, a fund that really takes the, the grains and uh, maybe along for uh, over a week or so. And some people were actually lucky yesterday to be able to get it on a little dip pre-market. Uh, I, I, I like that. Uh, so wheat is looking good. It's trading at 474, up four and a half. Corn is... Also looking okay, it's down three quarters at 379. It's already only in leg B, but a very strong move from the 361, 361 round number low. I should put that in. Well, that's a continuous contract, so it's always going to be sliding round number low. And it's gone all the way to the 380 level. I'd say 20 points is pretty darn good. Uh, it's about 8%. And it's still only in leg B, and the weekly chart is not great. It needs a lot of work. It actually needs the 384 to 388 area to, to, to be hit in the next two weeks and without test, testing 372. 375 is the key support now. And the soy, the soybean is trading continuous contract. Not well. It's down 3.5 at 903. It went to a peak B. It's arching over. This is going to be the question. There's a big rectangle formation, long rectangle formation in the weekly chart. What is it going to do? It needs. It better hold the eight. It better hold 900 to 897s, and then have a really quick move back into the 908 area or higher. 
and then we'll see what happens. I want you to also show you the LT, which is uh, LT, no, LC. LC is the U, uh, U, a live cattle continuous contract, April contract, sharply low. Now, this is a pattern we've seen in the Dow, the S&P, um, a little bit in the IW, uh, we've seen the IWM, a little bit in the Qs, where it went to a peak, in this case, peak E, in live cattle on the continuous contract, the 1st of March at 130.45. It plunged down to the 125s, then it ran up again, and I have to call because it made a slightly new recovery high. Instead of the 130, what did I say, 130.45, it went to 130. Oh, double top. I didn't realize. Double top. So this is gray. Uh, it went to a double top. And that said, if there is a pullback here, that's a double top V-shaped pattern. And that's very negative, especially with the MACD and stochastic go weak, which they were. So this says to me, live cattle has made a double top in the weekly chart at a peak D. And there's a real good chance that live cattle is going to go from the 127 level where it's at right now, test the low that was made back on the 12th and 13th in the 126s. My suspicion is that 124s will be the next level that we're going to watch. If you look at KC, which is the coffee, now these are things I don't normally do. We're looking at stocks, uh, uh, trade that is, uh, for my subscribers. Occasionally, we'll do something in the in the commodities a commodity area. We once had it for a very long time, the DBC, which was more oil-based. It's the uh, fund uh, that is the that is the commodity uh, fund. Um, and when crude oil was doing very well, it did very well. So here's KC, and this says to me, now I'm going to go to my automated Chapman Wave uh, notations. This shows you the support and resistance levels. This is an automatic program based that I had someone build for me. And that says that at 469, there's tremendous support uh, in the 10 minute. In the 120 minute, it's at 461. And the resistance is at 470 to 481 in the daily chart in wheat. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, that's very good. Let's see what it says in the KC which is the coffee continuous contract. And it says coffee has a lot of support, automated support in the 38, uh, 30, 93 area. 92.89 is the, uh, this is, remember, it doesn't know about 10 cents and 25 cent interval. This is trading in, at 92.89 is the key support in KC daily. 92.85 in the weekly, and the monthly doesn't have anything, just a straight down move. That says this is the first opportunity that you've got a support level. It's broken through the near-term resistance levels. 95.91 is resistance in the 120-minute chart. Very nice candle. Will coffee make a bigger break? No, not until it starts to trade above 96.80. Once it can get to the 96.80 level, it says it's into this ugly candle of the uh, 20th of March, which had a high of... 96.80 and a low of 94.35. So that's going to be very important. A, a close below 92 would be very negative and say, yep, it could base a little bit longer, but it's not a good sign. It's got to move right now. Uh, so that's that. I want you to also look at, all right, let's look at the, um, before we go to the first big break, which will be the 9.30 time frame, uh, we're looking at, here we go. So let me do the same thing now in the at ES, this is the continuous contract of the futures, the E-mini, says that the re resistance we saw in the 28.54 to 28.61 area was perfect because the high was, in fact, 28.66, a round number high in the futures. So it went just above that, and now that is a very strong resistance. That's on the daily chart. The weekly has 28.25 as resistance and 28.16 as support. The 120 has 28.40. And this weekly has a whole series of resistances above 28.59 to 28.77. And uh, the 22.52 is major support in the weekly. Let's do the same thing for the YM, which is the Dow futures. Dow futures has 25.745 as the 10-minute uh, chart resistance. It's at 25.721 right now. Uh, the Daily chart is 2,600 key resistance, at that, and then 26,317. It went right in between that. 
and really pull back sharply. 25,481 is the futures support level. 120 minute chart is 25,854 has resistance quite a lot higher so i want to just go through those just to show that uh sometimes we can use some automated um, instances of of looking at support and resistance now this is what i wanted to look at in terms of today the vix index hasn't really especially since there was that 400 something point move on friday down the vix index went from the 12s it went from 12.37 on the 19th to 17.85 on the 25th. That was yesterday. Announced pullback is trading at 15.63. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, we've got a break coming up, and then we've got the Dow and the whole market opening up at 9.30. Basil Chapman, host of the Tiger Technicians Air Hour, sitting in for Larry Pizzavanta. Trade what you see. I'll be right back in a few minutes. We'll start the real market day. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sitting in for uh, for Larry Pesavento. This is uh, see what uh, trade what you see. Uh, the Dow is just open. Yep, the Dow's open. The Dow's up 189 at 25,706. Ooh, up 192. That's very strong. The S&P is at um, 2817, up 19. This is going to be a very interesting day because uh, we've got. Boeing adding to the Dow. The Dow, Boeing is up four and a half at 374.70. Uh, 
My, I said to subscribers this morning, I think that Boeing has a relief rally. There's a lot of stuff going on. I don't see uh, Boeing breaking away anything, but in the context of what's happened recently, it held the 363 level that was hit uh, two weeks ago very nicely. It went to 361 yesterday, 361.5, and now it's at 370. 5.20. And I said, I think it can go to the nine period moving average of 374, maybe even 382, the 14 period moving average, and then it might have to take another breather as all the news comes in. So let's just do this. I want you to go through uh, a couple of things uh, because of the, I want to wait for the start of the, uh, the show. Now let's see with the QQQ. Now the question I had, well, I don't know if it was a question or a statement about a head and shoulders pattern in the QQQ. Let me just go through this. The traditional way of looking at a head and shoulders is that you get a baseline on the left. There's a peak made, and then there's that's called the left shoulder because there's a move up that you call the head, and then the pullback shouldn't by much take out the left side low that started the what we call the um, the neckline, and that is at 150.13, the low of February of 2018. But we didn't. We smashed right through. We went to 143.46. That is way lower. So this is not your traditional head and shoulders. You can talk about it. It has the look of a head and shoulders because it made a left side at 187.52. It made a high of 180. 175.21. Sorry about that. Let me just do that. Put that in. 175. Point twenty one. I thought there was some problem there. Um, and then it went to 187.53, and then it pulls back very sharply down to the 143 level, rallies up. But where does it go to? It goes to the high, peak F slash B high, that was made on the 21st of March at 182.83. So this is, if I had to give it a name, it would be the, the deathly diamond. What is a deathly diamond? There's a pattern that I always chuckle at because I just never see it work out. I've seen it work out maybe once, where from a particular left side point, it has a rising trend line, it has a, a, a declining trend line, then it, from the top it has a declining trend line, and from the bottom it has a rising trend line, and it makes a diamond formation. And the rule of thumb is that if it starts to break down and it goes below a certain point, that is terrible action because it's going to not only take out the low on the left side, it is going to make a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. I've hardly ever seen that actually work. And on the other side, I have seen it work on the other side where instead of breaking down, it actually goes and retests the all-time high, or at least the major high on the left side. So. I'm going to just, I'm dealing with that because I keep getting the same question about you're not going to talk about the uh, head and shoulders. I've spoken about it, I explained it, I showed it, I showed the uh, pattern as it is formally in Wikipedia. This is just not the pattern. It can eventually look like the pattern in the end, but it's not the pattern that one trades because we've already broken decisively under the neckline. And if there was a sloping neckline, that sloping neckline would take you way below 143 take you to the left side low that I'm targeting as absolutely critical over the next year that has to hold 135.80. So now, Invesco Trust trading right now up $1.63, really nice action. Now, this is the thing that I am looking at. Um, within the context of this pattern, if it starts to fail, it gets the pattern that I was talking about be before. You remember the H pattern, the lowercase h? Because that becomes... A right, in Chapman Way parlance, it becomes a right shoulder failure pattern. It just says right shoulder. It doesn't say that it has to be a left side, right side, head and shoulder. It just says that right shoulder could fail, and it becomes the H pattern arching over. It hasn't even come close to it yet, but the MACD is very weak. Stochastic's trying to rally or 50%, but it's also very weak. And that says to me that the high that was made uh, just four days ago in the QQQ, which I didn't type in here, 182.83 on the 21st. There we go. 182.23. Uh, I'll have to go and check it. I hate it. 
Just one second, I read it, and the next second I forgot it. So here we go. We'll try it again. 183, was it 83? Yeah, 83. Okay. 182, 83. That's, I, I think we can have a tough time breaking that at this particular point. Let's see, the day is young. So within that context, uh, the QQQ having a very nice session. Now let's just go back. I want to see the E mini. So the E mini was pulling back earlier on. And now it's gone to a leg A, B, C, it's in leg D in the two-minute chart, and it is, it is broken through resistance points. This is very nice. It's the kind of thing you want to trade. Um, good. All right. So that is the two-minute chart we're looking at. Now, I want to go to a couple of things that I was asked about, and I'll go to here. The semiconductor index, the SMH is trading right now at 107.15. Uh, let me just check something here. I needed to look at it, if you don't mind. Uh, SMH, yes, 107.15, a really strong bounce, up 1.78, up 1.7%. And that's one of the bigger percentage moves of any of the key indexes. This says to me it's probably a failure pattern, 110.60 high of the 21st of March. I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be, it's going to be hard to take that out. Now, I've spoken about this before. I think I'll show it again. I think it's worth it. This particular chart right here. And I heard, I heard word from different people, one person in particular who's actually been to the fabrication companies over the last couple of weeks. Everyone's talking about a slowdown. Uh, Samsung's talking about a slowdown in the chip industry. Industry. Look at this. This is the semi shipment breakdown. It has the global leading manufacturing index growth. That's the blue line pulling back. Look how sharply the SMH is the shipping semiconductor shipments growth is. Um, it's at a, a, a multi-year low at this particular point. And here is the SMH close to a multi-year high. I don't know if that, is, that discrepancy is telling us yet that there's going to be an incredible burst of activity in the semiconductor area of buying in the next six months. It doesn't usually work that way. We'll see. Or whether the semis have just gotten out of, out of line here and will we'll be coming back to the median point at some, some, some stage even if it's just back to 99, the 200 period exponential moving average, they've just gotten away from themselves. That's my thinking right now, <laughs> but we'll see because the technicals in the daily are not, are not strong. The price is actually quite good. But look at the weekly. This is a very strong weekly chart, regardless of what's being said. Um, I, I don't know how it resolves itself in the end. So, Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry Pesavento. The Dow's up 214, S&P's up 24. I'll be right back after these important messages. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XA you and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. 
For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Hi folks, we're back and we're looking at uh, the SMH, as I said before, trading at 107.14. So let's just take a look at a couple of them. Applied materials. Applied materials is trading at 40.38 of 97A. B did go to a new high. Leg C in the weekly chart. Oh, it's, it's, hey, this is a stock that was at 62.40 March of 2018 when the SMHs made the all time high. It plummeted down to the 29 area. It's trading right now at 40. So uh, it's had a really good rally from the low. I'm looking at this. this is going to be a tell because Applied Materials is one of the, the really big uh, semiconductor companies. Uh, LRCX is the other, LAM Research, also having a bit of a, a bounce here. It's up three at 182. You've got Intel. Now, Intel is something very different. I, I believe that they their product alignment is slightly different. That's the reason why they were they did so well for so long when the others were faltering. Uh, let's see, Intel has gone from 57 back in June down to the 42s. It's actually had a much better rebound than many of the others. I think it's actually partially uh, responsible for the SMH's move. I think it's a big waiting there. So this is good action. Uh, it's at up 90 cents at 53.68. That was a PG. I'm not sure it's going to break to a new uh, high. This week's going to be really important. 54.99 was a high of the 21st. So that's one area. The other area we need to be looking at right now is I had a question about oil, uh, oil and gas. So if you look at the OIH, which is the um, Van Eck Vectors Oil Services, that's had a bit of a bounce. But if you look at it on, on a daily basis, look at this. It's just been in a trading band since somewhere around January. Since, yeah, since, since January, it's been stuck between just under 16 and just on 18 has just been in this range. And until it can get uh, into the 18.40 area and hold there for about two, three days, I think it's stuck. And until it breaks down and goes underneath 15.80, it, it's just in this range. If you look at the OIS, I believe that's now, have I updated that? That's the oil states. No, I didn't want to do that. If you look at NG, which is natural gas, this is the continuous contract. It, too, has just been stuck in a range. And that's very interesting that uh, you've got oil and natural gas. Very often, they go in opposite directions. Um, oil and gas trading at 2.76 is a continuous contract. Um, also kind of stuck between 270 and 285, at least at this particular time. So we were watching that closely. I just wanted to get back to gold to see where it is right now. Now it's down 7. I, it seems to me that gold is being used as a vehicle as part of the fear factor. If you look at the XLF, the XLF is up today, up 30 cents at 25.52. Kind of the MACD pulled back very sharply. Stochastic went down to the 14.7 area. I, I think it needs a little time. I think XLF needs a little more time in terms of re resolving what's going on. I do think, and I have a webinar coming up a week from tomorrow, Wednesday the 3rd, for subscribers. You can become a subscriber. Go to the front page of TFNN. 
and you'll see what I'm looking at. What I'm looking at is um, I'm going to be doing an analysis in time, et cetera, looking at when the XLF can finally break to the upside, because I do believe that you will need the financials. You will need a Goldman Sachs, which is at three at 191 right now, not looking too great. You'll need a Goldman in the 220 area. You'll need the XLF, which is trading at 2552 right now, at least above 2650. I, I would have to say above 2720. To get to the next phase, the buying phase, where people start to focus less on the politics of what's going on, but in the market action, so that you can get the um, IAI, the broker index, the broker dealer index trading like the XLF very poorly, iShares broker dealer trading, IAA trading at 58.47, up 75. I want to see it up in the 63s. Once it gets there, it means that people are now flocking into the market. We haven't. This has been the most hated mega bull market. I, I wouldn't say ever. I don't know about ever, but certainly in decades and decades, it just, it just, and, and you know why? It's because it represents something that the media doesn't like to talk about, and that is that the market's doing very well. People's portfolios should be doing very well maybe things are not quite as bad as being made out every single hour of the day. That's really the issue. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying those are the factors that, for me, would say that the general public is coming deep into the market. If you look at something like, uh, um, uh, what is that, uh, AMTD, AMTD Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade, look, that's not good action. Uh, one, uh, yes, two weeks ago, it's up in the 57s. Now it's in the 49s. Uh, this is just not good action. Yeah, I want to see people coming into the market. I want to see Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade, trading up much higher. I want to see the fact that people are now looking at the stock market as uh, not just something you quietly put money into every month, but something that's a viable commodity, something that you can actually use, feel, and trade, and do things with. And that's going to be very important. That would be the a phase that I'm looking at, what I call a coda phase. And I think that that is coming up. It's going to take a little while for everything to get together. I hope it does take a little longer because I want you to have legs when it starts to move to the upside. All right. So if you're looking at the IYC, and this looks uh, this is kind of Amazon-ish, that's the iShares U.S. Consumer Services ETF. Now, the high that was made at 205.69 on the 31st of March had a pullback to the 200 area, 201, and now we're trading at 203.36, up $1.15. It is good. And the weekly chart is still very good. So how this resolves to the downside is going to be very important because the daily and weekly charts are one thing, but that monthly chart technically needs a lot of work to break out and to go to the 213.17 high of October. But going from 213 down to 168, what's that, 30, 32 plus, uh, that's 45 points. So it's a, it's a 20, almost a 20 something percent uh, pullback in this particular index, the IYC, US Consumer Services ETF. And of course, if you look at Amazon, where's Amazon today? Amazon having a nice bounce up 24, 17.98. The MACD is strong, stochastic, is very good at 85%. The weekly is improving. I like this, and it says to me that these tech stocks are benefiting from statements that the Fed had made, et cetera. Let's see what a Johnson & Johnson is doing. Johnson & Johnson, oh, very nice, up $1.54 today, 138.14, holding very well at a 50% retracement from. It went from the high back in December of 148.92. It made a... I don't know how markets make this. Look, January of 2018, Johnson & Johnson, j and j goes to 148.32, has a little bit of a tumble. It goes down to 118. From 118, it spirals back to what? 148.99 in December, 67 cents away from that all-time high. 
and then it drops so sharply. I'll talk about it when we get back. Yards up 227. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey folks, we're back. Uh, Basil Chapman singing for Larry Pesavento and the uh, Johnson Johnson up 159 to 138.20. So it made that V-shape, so, you know, 69 cents or something above the previous high from January of 2018, a year later. And uh, then it has uh, less than a year later, and then it goes boom sharply down to the trend line support. This is going to be very important, and it's got a Chapman wave down channel right here. This is the resistance from the Chapman wave inside track resistance. If uh, Johnson Johnson at 138.20 can get above this candle right here, 21st of 138.78, that'll be very positive. And then this becomes a V-shaped pattern or a cup formation. Says it could retest the 140 round number high. Always love those round numbers that was made uh, just uh, uh, three weeks ago. All right, let's make this real short because we're about to wrap up. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow to do Larry's show. Um, my show at noon, I'll be doing that live. Got to zip downtown, come back. I'll be back in, what is it, two hours time? Yep, two hours time. Watch this closely. The VIX index. The VIX index has pulled back a little bit. It is down $1.25 at 15.08. If by 1 o'clock this afternoon, when I'm do, finishing my show Eastern Time, the VIX is below 15 and the Dow is holding at 227 right now, is above 240, that's going to be very good. And that's going to say there's a chance 
that we, we follow through this rally into early tomorrow, and then we've got to be careful. I think there's a turnaround. So for those subscribers who ask me the question, do we stick with the plan? Absolutely, stay with the plan. We've done the one thing. We're waiting for the other. If the other doesn't quite get to the level that we want, tomorrow we'll deal with it separately and probably in a separate way. The third thing, when I was speaking about the option, I don't think we're going to get that option. So pity I should have done it yesterday. That's the way it is. So we're about to wrap up. And before we wrap up, let me just say that uh, certainly it's a pleasure being here. Watch closely. Watch the TLT had a spectacular run. It went from the 121s to the 125s and trading at 124.80 right now. I think it's going to go to one more higher high in the next couple of days above 125.94. And then we're going to see if money comes out of the stocks into bonds or there's a reversal. Have a great day. I'll be back at noon. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.